Oh boy, do I have an exciting unboxing for you today, and it involves this and this. Now I haven't opened this package yet, but I do know what is inside waiting for me from Jackson, so let's go ahead and take a look. Here are the contents of what were in the package, and um, I just didn't want to hurt your ears with all the squeaking and whatnot from the bubble wrap. These first three don't have to do with this video. I just ordered two replacements for my detail brushes. These are the Escota Perlas, and then I also have ordered the Escota Perla in a size 8. I've never used larger than a size 2 for these since these are my detailing brushes, so I'm excited to try those out, but this is what I am more excited about for this particular video, but I did not order Turner, Daniel Smith, or Windsor and Newton paints. Um, they just like to reuse these boxes at Jackson's, which I think is really great. So let's start with this little one because I'm not sure what this is, and then we'll move on to the other three that I have a better idea for. Aha, so okay, this makes sense in what is in here. I just didn't think I ordered enough tubes to fill three cartons, but uh, maybe my recollection is deceiving me. So here's what is inside the bag. They are beautiful little Schmincke horror dam pans. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Denise, you just did a Schmincke video where you got this new 18 pan set. I think there were 12 pans in there, but it's an uh, 18 pan box. And what on earth are you doing buying more Schmincke when you clearly don't need more paint? But this video is all thanks to you guys. You guys have been using my Jackson's affiliate links uh, throughout the videos. And when you do that, I earn a small commission back on those sales. And this entire order was purchased with your help. So thank you guys so much for this. You are making a little mini dream of mine come true. And that will come to light in just a few moments. But let's go ahead and finish opening up these boxes to see what else is in here. If you couldn't already guess, it's more Schmincke paint, but I did order some of them in tubes. They're, um, well, I guess I could tell you these pans, right? We poured these out. So I have Helio Turquoise, Delft Blue, um, Olive Green Yellowish, trying to make some kind of spectral order here, <laughs> Neutral Tint, uh, Kaput Mortem, Transparent Orange, Quinacridone gold hue, because believe it or not, I did not have the quinacridone gold from Schmincke. Uh, and then we've got matter red dark. And then we have manganese violet to add to that. Burnt umber, also didn't have that for Schmincke. <laughs> um, and then we've got pure yellow. Green earth, this is to replace a color that I've been using a lot lately, actually, in that half pan set. And then cobalt turquoise. I've got um, a different cobalt green I think in that one but this is kind of like the holy grail of the cobalt turquoises and one I have wanted for the last three years it is officially the last cobalt color I ever plan on purchasing I think between this tube and the leftover imgram that I have I should never need to buy that again um but this is just like a, a dream purchase of mine to add to my collection because I've just heard such amazing things about it Okay, there's only one tube in here, so it's not as bad as <laughs> I was thinking. It's just a larger tube. So this is raw sienna. I got a larger tube because I don't have raw sienna in any other brand. And I'm actually hoping that I didn't make a mistake here. Oh, man. Okay, so I did this with the gouache, too. I recently got some of their gouache, also thanks to your affiliates links. And their raw sienna was a combination of... Uh, interesting colors so I didn't check this I just assumed incorrectly that it was a single pigment it is PBR 7 and PB or PY 43 so it's what Rossian is normally made out of plus yellow ochre but I should have double checked that because I know better so what do I plan to do with all these and um, why was I so excited that your purchases on Jackson's Affiliate allowed me to do such and how does it involve these other pan sets that I've got? Well, there's one more piece to this puzzle and that is that the 
lovely, sweet auto uh, was able to pick me up something that is not available here in the United States. She recently featured this tin. I don't know if it was in, it, it must have been in a video that I saw it from her. It is a 48 half pan set from White Knights, the tin. Uh, there's no paint inside of it, but it has a much smaller profile than the median palettes of the same size. So as a comparison, here is the tin next to the median, so it's slightly longer, but if we turn it on its side, it's so much thinner. It doesn't have a spot for a brush on the inside, but I don't care because I don't store my brushes inside these palettes anyway. And um, I was like, well, what am I going to fill inside this beautiful 48 half pan palette? And I just didn't want to make a loud noise for you guys. That's why it took me a second to open it up there. Um, I thought about, do I want enough white nights to fill this? I have enough to fill two rows, but I didn't really want to double that collection. Um, I have all the colors that I feel like I need from them. And then I was thinking, I already have a set for Daniel Smith. I've got a set for M. Graham. So let's go ahead and finally fill out that Dream Schmink set. Now, buying a... 48 half pan Schmink set outright was never going to be in the cards for me. I've collected these paints over the last three years. This original set of 12 was given to me for the first Christmas gift after I started getting into watercolors. And then the other paints on this were sent to me by the company to review, which was a while back. I did purchase this one with my own money, and now I was able to purchase these with your affiliate links. So. so thanks to all of this amazingness coming together, I am finally able to put together my own semi-custom 48 half pan set. Uh, the original 48 half pan blah, 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 uh, set from Schminka comes with some metallic colors, I think, and a half pan of oxgall, so this is technically more paint than I would have had in one of those sets. Obviously, it's not fully custom because these came in a set and these were gifted, um, but I did get to finish off the set with some colors I felt like I was missing. So I'm really excited to set this up. I'll do a little bit of a time lapse for you. Probably won't show you all of it because you'll get bored to tears, I'm sure. And then we'll come back and we'll give it a swatch. Alrighty, voiceover Denise coming at you to kind of explain a little bit of this process of setting up the new palette. I just briefly wanted to show you guys, in case you haven't seen a Schmincke half pan, what the packaging looks like, but you guys have probably already seen them in some of my other videos. I have a two-part full review early on from the channel. I'll go ahead and link that for you. I also have a more recent video where I was setting up that little 18 half pan set, uh, so you can check that out if you want. And I also have a full swatch with me video of the dot card, so plenty of Schmincke material here on the channel in case you want to go ahead and see that. But as it pertains to this particular video, I always want to make sure that I know what color they're going to be when I paint them out. Now, paints don't always look the color that they are in their pans because some paints are opaque and some are transparent and those types of qualities will affect how they reflect light when they are stacked up in a pan. So in order to go ahead and make sure that I can arrange all these colors to my liking in the final palette, I'm going to go ahead and dab out just a little bit of each tube color into the half pans that I plan on putting them in in the final version of the palette so that I can make some swatches and play around with those. And you'll see that in just a couple moments. Once all of the new tubes and half pans are painted out in their samples, it's time to do something that pains me a little bit. And that is to chop up all of my old palette charts. So in order to help me arrange these all, I'm a very visual person. And so I wanna make sure that I'm able to arrange the pans in the order that I want them in so that I don't have to go back and forth with this 48 set. It would be quite a pain in the tush if uh, I were to order them incorrectly. So here you're just going to see footage of me cutting up the old palettes or detaching them from that plastic sheet as in the case of that beautiful new palette that I just spent so much time setting up not that long ago. I have just a little note in case you guys have been following the channel and saw the Lashminka video that I did with that new travel palette that I was so excited to get. I really liked the shape of the 18 half pan set. I was really pumped to get it filled out and to use some new paints. But the problem is, is that I went on a lot of trips this summer and I was afraid to bring my Schmincke because I didn't want anything bad to happen to them. So I actually wasn't using the metal 
palette itself as my travel palette, which is what I wanted it to be. So by going ahead and taking all my Schmincke paints out, putting them into this big master palette, I'm hoping to be able to repurpose that 18 half pan set for something that I'm more comfortable traveling with, like my White Knights or even my Daniel Smiths. They are cheaper here in the US than these Schmincke's are. So this footage that you've been watching is just me arranging all of these little tiles into the order that I want. And here's an overview of almost all of the colors that made it in. I actually forgot I had one extra pan of hematite that I needed to add. So I took out the ivory black, which I don't use anyway. It came in the first 12 color set that I got and just went ahead and place, replaced it with that hematite color, which is kind of like a greenish black or gray. Then came the long process of going ahead and putting all of these little half pans from the various other palettes they were in into the 48 half pan set. We're going to go ahead and fast forward here so you don't have to watch all of that boring footage. Um, but here is the final result. And as promised, we're going to go ahead and fill in those beautiful half pans uh, to really round out the palette. My favorite thing... I think, I'm pretty sure, about Schmincke is how beautifully they pour. If you guys didn't already know, Schmincke actually pours their half pans four times and lets them dry in between each layer before you get their final product. So the tubes and the pans are the same formula, but just look how beautiful and smooth these pour out. So these pans do sit at a little bit of an angle because of the container that they are in. I couldn't fill them all the way up, but I will go ahead and top them off after couple of days to make sure that they are nice and full and ready to use. So here's the beautiful, messy, already lived in 48 half pan set, just a little bit of an overview. And before I wrap up the video, I'm going to show you a little bit of the swatching that I did for the identification card. Now, given that I had so many different colors coming together, I wanted to make sure that I knew what each color was and that I didn't lose track of it. By the way, I don't know if you noticed earlier, I do write the names of the pigments on all of the individual pans just so that if they ever get separated from their set that I do know which paint they are and can identify them. For this chart, I am using Arches watercolor paper, which is what I paint on most often. And I like to do my swatch cards on the paper that I use most often because it will be the most accurate representation of what to expect from that color. I went ahead and gridded those off. Uh, I actually measured them using the palette itself. So I lined up the palette on the paper and made little tick marks at each of the rows and columns for where they would all be so that it would be a life-size accurate representation of the layout of this palette. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry, I didn't get any footage of that. After I've measured everything out, I go over it in ink and then I make sure to put all of the pigment names down so that I know what colors they are. Um, then I went ahead and used this little Escoda travel size brush. I think it came with a Sennelier palette that I got a little while back. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. And uh, it doesn't matter what brush you use. I'm just going ahead and doing little graded washes on each of these sections. You can do these swatches however you want. You can do them all full strength. You could do graded washes. You could do glazes. You could even do um, back runs by adding a drop of water to one of the colors. It's really up to you on what you want your identification sheet to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and let you finish watching the footage from this little ID chart come together and I will check back in with you in just a few moments to wrap up my thoughts on the colors included in this set.
So as I mentioned, this was a bit of a Frankenstein palette coming together from two other prefabricated sets, a selection of random colors from Schminka, and then topping them off with a few of my picks. The overall balance of this set I wouldn't say is exactly even. Uh, for starters, you'll notice right away that there is an excessive number of yellows, and unless you're only painting like sunflowers and cornfields for the entirety of your watercolor career, I don't think you need this many. And in order to help kind of navigate through the colors that I would or would not choose to have in this palette or that I probably will not restock. I don't even know if I'll run out of these certain colors because I don't know if I'll use them very often. I have put little white dots on the final color chart for you guys to look at. So the white dots indicate colors that I wouldn't choose to purchase again with my own money, I guess. Um, some of them are on the fence. Like, I don't mind the graphite gray and the hematite, but I don't need five neutrals in a set since I rarely use them anyway. Schmincke's yellow ochre is really opaque and I don't prefer it. I'd rather use the raw sienna or the titanium gold ochre. Um, we've got a couple of extra yellows that I just don't ever reach for. So while they're lovely colors and I'm sure that they have good uses, I just wouldn't find uh, use for them in my my normal painting use. I rarely use oranges either, so I would choose the transparent orange that I picked out versus the Saturn Red, which is another deep red orange. I am not a floral painter, so I don't have a reason for this many reds either, so I pared those down a bit. And I think that the only color that I feel like I'm really missing from this set that I wish that maybe I had purchased in my own selection would be a dioxazine violet, which I believe they call Schmincke Violet. Overall, I just could not be more thankful or grateful for having this palette come together over the past three years between my mom's original Christmas gift of, of that 12 color set to Schminka for sending some of their new watercolors for me to try out, to Otto for helping me get a hold of that White Knights palette that I couldn't find here, and to every single one of you guys who use my affiliate link so that I could make this purchase because I literally could not and did not do it before I had that available to me. So thank you guys so, so much. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel regularly over on Patreon and to all of you guys who are liking this video. If you enjoyed the content, commenting down below to let me know what you guys think of Schminka and if you've ever built a Frankenstein palette for yourself. And until next time, happy paletting.